ESPN does want to kill Barstool Sports. Sorry, uh, euthanize them. I know how PC ESPN is. ESPN bet is something that's coming, I guess. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Penn Entertainment sold Barstool Sports back to its founder, Dave Portnoy, for just $1. Every time I think I'm out, they pull me back in. I, I never thought I'd sell Barstool. I am no longer the majority owner of Barstool Sports. I have purchased back Barstool Sports from Penn, so that is right. And today I will tell you how their $2 billion deal to become a sports book, ESPN Bet, will only help their competitor Barstool. Recently, Dave Portnoy took back 100% control of his company, Barstool Sports, for $1 $1 after selling it to Penn Entertainment for roughly $500 million. Penn could not eat into the sports betting market share like they had hoped and ditched Barstool, costing themselves hundreds of millions of dollars, all so they could give $1.5 billion to ESPN over the next 10 years, plus another $500 million in stock options. And the news got a lot of attention, and Penn stock popped. But guess what? Shares of Penn fell today again. They're now below where they were before the deal was announced. So who won that merger? Can Barstool survive without Sportsbook's ad revenue? Because they won't ever have any, ever, ever again. Uh, I answer that, plus tell you why ESPN isn't as smart as they think they are and why they aren't a slam dunk for Penn. ESPN is treating Barstool like- That was a bold last minute decision. I feel bad for you. I don't think about you at all. And that's stupid. Today we go balls deep into Barstool and ESPN. If you want ESPN to not euthanize me, subscribe here. Now real quick, Pin Entertainment is a national gaming and entertainment company that operates integrated entertainment, sports content, and casino gaming with 43 properties in 20 states. Simply put, they ran a bunch of casinos, built out a sports betting app, and partnered with Barstool to try and take advantage of that digital land grab when sports betting began to be legalized across the country. They are competing with other companies like FanDuel, DraftKings, BetMGM, Caesars, and now Fanatics in that market. Pin with Barstool was only able to capture 3% of the sports betting market, but Pin if they can give two billion to ESPN, then they have to be doing okay, right? They were their own media company. They owned all of Barstool outright. Like that deal finalized this last year. It was their company. And now they are paying out the ass to partner with another one in ESPN, a company they will have no control over. ESPN is a media company. Lumped in with Disney's cable networks, ESPN and others generated $3 billion in profit for Disney. Profit in the first six months of 2023. I think ESPN is good for close to a billion of that annually. Now, Penn did $1.67 billion in total revenue, so that should tell you how much more money there is to be made as a successful sports book with a big market share versus a successful sports media company, which Penn was with Barstool as Barstool. Now, I produced a 50 plus minute video about the rise and fall of ESPN with the help of my writing partner, Will Keys and editor, Johnny Barks. I appreciate all 500,000 of you who watched that. I can't get that deep into Barstool and there's no need to because everything they do is public. It's very public and on video. There's literally a 15 part docu-series about the rise of the company on their website. And now there's gonna be even more transparency with their brand as this is one of the first things the president of the company, Dave Portnoy, said in his return to full control. This is now gonna be a place for content, 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 content. I owned it back for less than 24 hours. And what time is it right now? 9.45. These motherfuckers don't show up. I'm only in the office for a fucking week. What the fuck are these idiots doing? But here's the cliff notes on Barstool Sports, just for anyone who might not be familiar. Dave Portnoy, El Presidente, if you will, started Barstool Sports as a sports newspaper centered around betting in about 2004. He and Todd McShay were born- Same hospital, Salem, Massachusetts, on the same day, about 
10, 12 hours apart. Probably known him since I was five years old. You don't need to know that, but it's funny that he and Todd grew up as childhood buddies. In 2007, the print publication, funded by offshore betting, turned into a website, barstoolsports.com. Now, they centralized the company in Manhattan, New York, where One Bite Pizza Reviews could thrive. It took off because of Dave and because of the Juggernaut podcast, Pardon My Take, featuring Big Cat and PFT Comics. Commenter. Alongside that, you have KFC Barstool and dozens and dozens of other successful creators and shows. They doubled down on their personalities at the company instead of old and tired formats, and it worked. It worked well. Barstool feels like an overnight success, but that shit took a decade to build into something special and another several years to turn into a formidable media company that was generating a hundred million plus in revenue every year. Now the Churnin Group invested in Barstool first, acquiring a majority stake of the company for 10 million. We have taken investment from an investment company called Churnin Digital. Before Pin Entertainment came in and dropped 163 million for 36% of the company in 2020, with an option to buy 100% of the company for an additional 388 million, which they did, which is where the 550 million dollar number comes from. It's also why Dave Portnoy has a legit net worth of over a hundred million. Speaking of net worth, here's how I make mine. Let me invite you into my bedroom because I got a new mattress, sickos. Uh, my wife Jess and I just swapped out our old mattress for a bear mattress who I wanna thank for sponsoring today's show. And in more ways than one sponsoring my dreams. Get it? Ah! 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 In short, Jess, she has some weird spine things going on and she needed a mattress with better support for her back. So we went with Bear, which makes premium mattresses designed to upgrade your sleep, which makes every aspect of your life better. And the mattress is shipped right to your front door with free shipping. So you can take the Bear uh, sleep quiz to match you with the perfect mattress. No pressure, you can't fail this quiz. That said, I did get an A plus. And it's designed to match a mattress to your body type and sleep preferences. Jess was literally sleeping on the floor before we got our bare mattress. Since then, she's been able to sleep through the night, unless our dumb cats wake us up. Uh, we've had the Flacco, sorry, Elite Hybrid for a few weeks and I love it. And not just so I can say I've gotten into bed with the bear. A mattress, it's a huge purchase, okay? Sleep is incredibly important to your well-being, so I wouldn't do this sponsor if bear didn't make a great product. Plus, they give you a 120 night sleep trial to test it out. And if you keep it, it has a lifetime warranty. So right now, use my link below to get an insane 30% off your new mattress with code that's good. And they're also having a Labor Day sale, which will get you 35% off if you order before you go into labor, Labor Day. Link below, code that's good for your bare mattress. Barstool, for shit posters like me, was a place that gave me hope that I could have an unfiltered voice while talking about sports and figure out a way to turn that into a living. Now that's par for the course in the current media landscape, but when I started this shit, nobody who had any real connection to sports media would even acknowledge that I existed. I looked at Barstool like, fuck, that means this shit is fucking possible, hell to the fuck yeah! Here's an example though of how much influence Barstool has had on the sports media landscape in terms of what is now an acceptable tone to discuss sports. I created this Broncos tailgate cooking video years ago featuring all the products I could find that were endorsed by former Broncos players. Literally tastes like the Denver Broncos. Yes. Now part of that was former Broncos lineman Mark Schlereth and his green chili, who after I posted the video DM'd me saying the video was hilarious but he could not retweet it because I said the F word. Hey Rachel Ray, it's time for you to get the fuck out of the kitchen because I'm coming. Fast forward a year and change and Schlereth is on the Pardon My Take podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's good. <laughs> 
So anyone who doesn't think Barstool will change the sports media landscape is mistaken. It's massive, and that's why the deal not working with Penn is a little alarming. Barstool's fans are much more loyal than ESPN fans. I'm not even sure ESPN has fans anymore, just people who go to it to get some of the sports information and news they need. And just because ESPN is massive, right? It reaches ev everywhere. I'm not sure that will directly translate to conversions and capturing a pin's targeted market share. They are betting heavily that people will choose ESPN bet just because ESPN is so big. The reason PIN and the Barstool relationship had to end though is because of ESPN. This is where they came in swinging that big old Mickey Mouse dick. PIN wanted to do a deal with Disney. They didn't, Disney didn't want you in the deal. Didn't want your name there at all. So you took back Barstool and then that freed up PIN to be bought by Disney for $2 billion. Have I got that right? Well, they didn't buy him. They're doing the deal. I don't know exactly. I wasn't involved in the conversations. But you bought back your company. Oh, for I bought back my $1. company. Yeah, I bought my, my company back for one dollar. But we had a great relationship with Penn. So happy for Penn. I'm happy for ESPN. I think they're going to have a great partnership. I think that's just like a great, great structure for both of them. Here's why Penn had to move on from Barstool. For the first time ever, we're in a very regulated industry. Sure. Like uh, gambling is so regulated. With Penn, a regulator can start playing games with licenses, issue penalties, and they were doing that. Things are good now, and if anyone can navigate how to exist without sports book revenue in the sports media landscape, it is Dave Portnoy and- The greatest things about Barstool is we've built an awesome machine. Like we've built a really healthy, viable business and now really will be about what Dave wants to do with it, what his vision is for it and where it should go. So that's what we're doing. So the headline that reads, Dave Portnoy acquired back full control and 100% of his company for $1 is true. 100% true, but a bit misleading because if he ever sells Barstool, Pin gets 50%. And by the way, I am never going to sell Barstool Sports, ever. I'll hold it till I die, and when I die, I'll give it to Dan or Kevin. Barstool is 100% his, as long as he runs it. Uh, that will be unique because every up-and-coming company in the media world tries to build itself up so a bigger company can acquire it. Nobody is in the game to build a self-sustaining media company. But now that's what Barstool has to be. And I think in terms of content, that's going to be fun as hell. We don't have to watch what we say, how we talk, what we do. It's back to the pirate ship. Barstool has this unchecked freedom that say Pat McAfee now at ESPN won't. And how those two entities grow moving forward is something I am interested in. Also, sports betting is still not legal in many states. And if it passes in those states, the sports betting overall, overarching, uh, Revenue that comes in will be astronomical. It will be insane. And Barstool, in say five to 10 years, maybe even longer, could be in a position where a sports book is willing to purchase them for several billions of dollars. And I know Dave said he won't sell, but if the number's right, smashed it. Giving half of that to PIN might not matter and they might build themselves a company that gets acquired again for billions and billions of dollars. That's the long play. That's the way I think Barstool is looking at uh, the future of how they build their company, even if sports books aren't a part of it now. Barstool had to agree to a non-compete clause to make this divorce happen, which means Barstool cannot work with any other sports books. Plus, Barstool cannot launch its own sports book. And before Penn and Barstool agreed to their $500 million acquisition, sports books were far and away the biggest advertisers with Barstool. Offshore sports books, which I gambled with, said they would advertise if I had a newspaper or a physical handout. Their very first sponsors were offshore betting sites. They're like a sprinter who has to now learn to run really fast without their legs. Can it happen? Uh, I'm not yet sure. This doesn't mean though that Barstool can't survive without the influx of sports books money, but it does mean they will have to get creative with how they continue to bring in money and probably get leaner. Portnoy is very loyal with his employees, but let's see if that sticks if Barstool starts losing revenue. The thing that can save them 
is if they continue to make massive amounts of money selling their own merch and their own products that they build. And while there are certainly other massive companies out there that would gladly spend money to advertise with Barstool, the Catch-22 of Portnoy wanting to provide completely unfiltered content is that some brands just won't be down to advertise on that. We think of Barstool as a pretty big entity, and it is but it still doesn't hold the candle to ESPN. ESPN still gets like 117 to 120 million unique viewers every month while Barstool is getting just 8 million. Neither can hold a candle to Pornhub, which is more visited than Wikipedia. Just thought I'd throw that in there. ESPN is the 18th biggest website in the world, just ahead of LinkedIn, where most former ESPN employees are now updating their resumes. Interesting. But all of that's a little misleading because while BarstoolSports.com is a centralized location, Barstool as a brand is not. It's everywhere. It's one of the biggest sports brands in America. Maybe the world, I don't know. And while its website page views won't put it in the top 50 of sports site rankings, its reach far surpasses that. It's consistently in the top podcast downloads. You have to factor in its reach on YouTube and of course their insanely popular personalities and their social platforms. Page views are nice, but I'm not going to barstoolsports.com to see what the fuck Big Cat and PFT have to say. I'm going to their Twitter or listening to their pod. ESPN is bigger, yes, but Barstool has a nice share of the pie. Since Penn and Barstool got into bed together, probably on a bare mattress, Barstool grew its audience by 194%, delivered 875,000 videos across all of their social platforms, increased sales by 160%, sold over 5 million of their own products, and got into live event programming. They are a diverse money-making brand to say the least. In addition to that, Barstool isn't just a sports brand, it's an entertainment brand that covers topics that have nothing to do with sports. That said, Pin needed a bigger reach to compete with the big boys of betting, names like DraftKings and FanDuel, and they figured that ESPN was the way to reach a much wider and perhaps richer audience, specifically Phil Mickelson, who according to Golf Digest has wagered a billion dollars on sports over the last three decades, losing nearly 100 mil. If ESPN can just get him to be their official better, they win. But I think the partnership with PIN and ESPN, ESPIN as I'm calling it, creates some ethical issues that will have to be ironed out. ESPN, through their reporting, impacts the line for sports events in a way that Barstool didn't and probably will never do. Guys like Woj and Adam Schefter can reveal or hold on to news that could severely affect the odds of a game, potentially giving PIN an advantage over their com customer base. If that becomes the case, people will catch on and will avoid betting there for that very reason. How does ESPN win though? Well, PIN <laughs> gives them uh, one and a half billion in cash payments over the next decade and grants ESPN roughly 500 million in PIN stock. ESPN also gets to designate a PIN board member after three years. If you watch Succession, you know why that's important. And Kendall, Frank, Asha, Alona, off the board, fired with immediate uh, effect. ESPN is now going to lean on Pat McAfee to promote their new betting service, ESPN Bet. And Pat fucking crushed that shit for FanDuel. Can he make lightning strike twice? I don't know. If ESPN really wanted to destroy Barstool though, they would have partnered with FanDuel or DraftKings. That relationship, if even possible, would have killed any chance Pin, aka Barstool Sportsbook, would have had at ever seizing any real notable stronghold in the sports betting world. Now, if they succeed with Pin, they're just going to make the Barstool founders more money. Penn was able to broker an unbelievable deal with ESPN. We wish them nothing but the best in their endeavors. It's truly a win-win. I still own a ton of Penn stock. I'll probably hold it because I think it's gonna go up. Think about how crazy this shit is, okay? Dave Portnoy is in a position now where he has nothing to lose. He is a wild card. I'm still the wild card, no, 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 so no. that's good. No, no, nobody wants a wild card. I've already, you know, made the money that I need to make. Uh, <laughs> This is just a place where I want to be like the best content on the internet. Guess I cut the brakes! Wild card, bitches! Yeah!
He has a ton of his wealth that's liquid to him, and he has a ton of wealth that's tied into pin stock. So even as ESPN squeezes them out of the sportsbook game, he, and I'm assuming dozens of the original employees, will make more and more money if ESPN and pins venture together does well and their stock rises. Money he can reinvest into Barstool to compensate for, say, any disparity of sportsbook revenue they lose out on. But you can tell he already feels the pressure to up the amount of content his company produces. Or, I had a sales meeting today. <laughs> I think I think uh, I let him. I let him I know. Baby's I, back. I let him know I was here. Crack some skulls. I didn't crack skulls, but it's like you, their comp plan was fucked to me. They should be making more money on their comp plan, less base salary. Uh, you know, a lot of people may not make it. So are people gonna lose their jobs at Barstool? Possibly, but I think it's more about setting a tone. Trying to establish that this is a company that needs to up its output, up its sales in order to survive without the money that's coming in from sports books. And I couldn't even imagine being a salesperson that just got hired to Barstool that is thinking to themselves, okay, I'm gonna go sell. Am I gonna sell like maybe the smartest, funniest person ever exists, PFT commenter, or am I gonna go try to sell this punter in Indiana that I've never met before? And as sexy as getting your company back for $1 is, I think it's gonna be a big challenge to be the only sports media company that can't work with sports books, and they have massive amounts of money to spend. <laughs> So I think the fun's over, the tone's shifting, and now the work is beginning. It's why Dave's posting on his YouTube channel again. They need that to be another source of revenue for him. What I love about Barcel is we call it like it is. Every single personality calls it like it is. Right. And some traditional companies don't like that. We know that our fans love it. But their advantage is that there's no other company that is going to show you this transparency, this behind the scenes type look as they navigate these new waters on their so-called pirate. Ship. And then once they make this good news announcement in a few hours, you find me. I'll give you like the Jim Halford like smirk, like told you so. One thing Dave has done uh, much more effectively than ESPN throughout the years is identify talent. That includes Pat McAfee, who Barstool signed when Pat first entered the sports media world after retiring from the NFL. He was with them for roughly two years before going out on his own, but not after Barstool essentially built him a massive audience. Pat broke down how many of the sports books have not worked. Fox bet did not work. No. Terrible. Mm -hmm. Very bad. I didn't know there was one. Bingo. Exactly. Bingo. <laughs> uh, Barstool sports book, it did not work nationally. Nope. It was uh, the market share was not there. It did not work. Now, do you know how insane it is to have your biggest competitor making you more money if it does well? ESPN may not want to be associated with Barstool, but they are in a big way because of the stock market. ESPN is now partnered with a company in Penn that essentially is taking an $850 million loss to work with ESPN. Is that how fucking business works? I should, what, how? I don't know, I don't know. How does one figure out net worth? There's a lot of big numbers. I was never a math guy. I'm actually rooting for this to be a deal that works for both Barstool and for ESPN. If both of those companies succeed, that benefits all of us bottom feeders down here who get the leftovers from the advertisers. Thanks for watching That's Good Sports. Please subscribe here on YouTube. And, uh, just, uh, you know, tell your, tell, tell a loved one that, and, uh,